Hello everyone and welcome back to our console. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we will see one more interesting abdominal CT scan. So like always, we will scroll through the CT first. You can identify the phases, the views, what section are we looking at, what are the findings. Fairly simple case, this one. Two or three important findings there we are going to discuss. I will give a brief history when I am starting to discuss the case. But before that, just have a look at the phases. Try to identify the phase. Don't focus only on the pathology. As I always say, don't focus only on the pathology. You have to look at the entire scan. So I can start giving a brief history while you are looking at this phase. This patient had a bad attack of acute pancreatitis with ARDS effusion ascites around six months prior to this scan was done. The patient recovered after around one month of treatment in the ICU without any surgery. And then this scan was done as a part of six month follow up because he had necrotizing collection when he was discharged from the hospital. So I think that makes this fairly easy. Always there are some findings that can be missed in a scan like this and that is why it is important to not assume any case to be easy and look at each and every case with the merit that it deserves. Always have a discussion with your radiologist on the console while planning management. So those are all the phases that you have seen. Let us now start seeing them. By now you know this is the arterial phase. Why? Because the aorta is filled with contrast. Right? Aorta, the cross of diaphragm, the very basics. No points for guessing. This is the entire collection. What do you call it? In this patient, like I said, the history was of acute necrotizing pancreatitis. So this is a world of pancreatic necrosis. This is a six-month follow-up scan. You can see some remnants of pancreas, but most of the pancreas in the body and tail is replaced by this collection. Right? Is there any other pancreas remaining that we need to see? Okay, what else do we need to see in this case? And that is what makes this case interesting. If you have identified the collection, that is good. But there are some important points that you should also identify. There is a separate small collection in this area. Right, this one. So that is something that should not be missed. Because if this patient is planned for surgery, this collection may also need to be tackled right so that is one point that is often missed in a scan like this so that collection should not be missed this is the arterial phase so let us look at all the arteries that's the sma okay the superior mesenteric artery and the celiac artery right the splenic and the common hepatic so you can see the splenic properly let us try and trace the splenic i always like to trace it behind the pancreas and going into the spleen. So that is the splenic artery. So splenic artery looks okay. There is no aneurysm which can be a sequelae to pancreatitis. So that is why it should be seen. SMA looks good. Gastroduodenal artery also looks good. You have not seen the description of arteries in CT. We have videos on it. So go into the radiology section and have a look at those videos. We have a separate video on tracing the celiac axis as well. So in this video, we are not going to repeat that. But essentially, there are no pseudoaneurysms present in this scan. So 
one important point there are two separate collections that is something that you should know okay now going to the next interesting point this is the portal venous phase right you can see the portal vein and the superior mesenteric vein so that is the superior mesenteric vein and that is the portal vein so are we missing something i think by now all of you know what i am trying to point at the splenic vein is thrombosed okay so this patient has splenic vein thrombosis that is important for you to identify so splenic vein is thrombosed and that is why i showed the coronal also so you can look at the portal phase in coronal again now that you know what you are looking at that is the portal vein and you can't see the splenic vein right there is no splenic vein so that is another important point that you need to identify so this is the second collection that we saw and if you miss this collection if the patient is planned for surgery the can be post-operative problems so that is why this collection is very important to identify this is the c loop of duodenum so this collection is separate from the main collection so it is not going to be tackled if we do only one drainage of this part okay now these are some of the very important points that you need to see when you are seeing a scan like this. Another important point to discuss is the remnant pancreas. So there is significant amount of head and and neck which looks okay. The C loop of duodenum looks okay. The stomach looks okay. There is no free fluid. There is no effusion. So these are other important points that you need to see. Coming to the planning part of it, there is no air in the collection. The patient is not having fever. But six to seven months have already passed. There is a separate collection in this area which may not get absorbed in future. So the options for this patient are a surgery now versus wait and watch and get a three-month scan again. Now what decides this decision making is the pancreatic duct. So if there is a breach in the pancreatic duct and it is communicating with this collection, the patient is not going to heal without surgery because there is a disconnected duct syndrome. However, the disconnected duct syndrome is defined at six months, at least after the attack of pancreatitis or for whatever reason the duct got disconnected. So in this case, we can still wait and watch because there are no signs suggesting deterioration in the clinical condition of the patient. And over the six months that we have followed this patient, this collection has not increased in size. There is no effusion. There is no ascites. There is a separate skip collection, but it has also not changed in size. So the plan for this patient is a follow up after three months to look at the change in the size of the collection. Now, one question that arises in our minds is, should we do an MRI in these cases? Because the MRCP may show a disconnected duct. Now, this sounds theoretically very correct, but let me show you the MRCP images. And we like to see the T2 axial images as well in the MR. So, these are T2 axial images. We have already discussed why this is T2. Just a quick review. The spinal fluid is white. You saw the stomach fluid is white. So water is white. WW T2. Right? That is how we can remember. This is the collection. Again, T2 water is white. Right? So you can see the fluid component and the solid component. Because sometimes the MRCP images may miss a ductal discontinuity. But these images may show a compressed duct. However, it's very difficult to find duct in these cases because of this entire big necrotic collection that is completely compressing the pancreas posteriorly. So only the posterior part of pancreas is alive and that is why it is very difficult to identify duct in these cases. Right, So that is why MRCP was done in this patient to document a disconnected duct. But you can see here, it is very difficult to identify the duct. Okay, So 
to summarize the case, what we have seen, there is a collection with some pancreatic remnant in the pancreatic body and tail, neck and head look preserved. There is a separate collection below the duodenum in the scan and you can see the portal vein, you can see the SMV, but you cannot see the splenic vein. This is the left renal vein, not the splenic vein. Right, so the patient has splenic vein thrombosis. Okay, so whenever you have splenic vein thrombosis, also rule out gastric collaterals. I like to see that in coronal. So you can have a look at the portal venous phase in coronal section. No significant collaterals in this case so far. Right, so that is also an important point to remember. So that is why discussing these cases with the radiologist is important so that you don't miss out on the points. Also as clinician, you want your radiologist to know the history. You want them to know what we are looking for as surgeons or as medical gastroenterologists or physicians who is managing the patient. And then the discussions become very interesting and very useful and very clinically applicable, right? So I hope this can also help you in understanding the management of patients like this. You can wait and watch for three months. Role of MRI with a collection can be limited, but you can attempt it. If you can document a disconnected duct, it takes the patient towards surgery because a collection with disconnected duct is not going to heal without surgery. If it stays same in size, then you can observe the patient. Thank you.